question number three to you today. Supplying the sports book, maximize your potential. Today's session is hosted by Melissa Rizal from DXLDB and Bert Foster Jr. from the Office of Lottery and Gaming. Melissa and Bert will be moderating a conversation with Ms. Tina R. Harrison, Director of Business Development for Infinity Solutions, Inc. Infinity Solutions is a 100% owned minority woman-owned CBE, which provides a myriad of security-related functions and is an OLG licensed supplier to the William Hill Sportsbook. We are grateful for today's guests taking time to join us today. So with that, I'll turn it over to Melissa and Bert. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for the introduction, Ridgely. Again, my name is Bert Foster. I'm the Audit and Compliance Officer, the OLG, the Regulation and Oversight Division. And I'm going to put up on my screen just a quick slide deck so everybody can know more about our agency. So as you can see, sports wagering is licensed in the District of Columbia. The Office of Lottery Gaming, formerly Lottery and Charitable Games, is the regulatory body. All licensed gaming in the District of Columbia, including lottery, charitable gaming, and sports wagering. Our office regulates privately operated entities in the district. We monitor their operations and their gaming related suppliers for compliance and within applicable district and federal laws. There are a number of different sports wagering licenses in the district. And some of these are the class A operator, which basically is your largest sports venues. The Capital, Hill, Capital One Arena, Nationals Park, Audi Field and St. Elizabeth's. There are class B operators, which are such smaller venues, such as a bar, restaurant, tavern. And then there is the management service provider, which provides a lot of technical support and sports wagering information to the sports book. You have a supplier license category, which can be a payment processor. And then you have your occupational licenses, which basically is for any individual that's working in the sports book they get occupationally licensed. And then there's the provisional licensing, which I'm gonna talk about in the next slide deck. So let's talk about provisional versus standard licensing. A provisional license is an expedited application process. It's not nearly as onerous and the due diligence isn't as detailed, but it's available to operators, management service providers, and suppliers. The key is, that particular applicant has to have a current sports wagering license in an approved jurisdiction in the same or equivalent category as the Office of Lottery and Game. It's also valid for six months, which helps get those entities up and running quicker. A standard license, which requires an extensive due diligence background investigation, is more onerous and takes approximately six, four to six months to get processed. Now I'll talk about briefly the certified business enterprise and other requirements. Operators and MSPs are required to submit a CBE plan. That CBE plan must be approved by the business development, uh, sorry, with, by DSLBD's uh, director. Um, and it requires a 35% um, share of their operating budget going to the CBEs. My colleague, uh, Melissa will talk more about that on her slide deck. But there are certain advantages if you go with a joint venture process, which means you have to be certified by DSLBD as a joint venture. And there's a reduced application fee. For a Class A operator, it's $125,000 fee. 
And for class B, it's only $25,000 application fee. Thank you for connecting with us and I'll pass it over to Melissa. Thank you, Bert. I'm going to pull up my slide deck here as well. And good afternoon, everyone. So, as Bert mentioned, uh, my name is Melissa Rizell. I'm the business certification manager with the DC Department of Small and Local Business Development, or DSLBD. Um, for the businesses on the on this in the session that aren't from are not familiar with DSLBD, we support the development, economic growth, and retention based business uh, retention of district based businesses, and we promote the economic development throughout the district's commercial corridors. So we are the agent. We are we are the agency that really meets businesses where they are, whether you're a startup or you're a mature business. We help you where you are and provide services to those businesses. As it relates to sports betting, I wanted to kind of talk about right now um, the role that DSLBD has and the role that the Office in Lottery and Gaming has or OLG has um, with this process. So, as we're all aware, um, the Sports Wagering Lottery Amendment Act of 2018 became law on May 3rd, 2019. And what that did was legalize sports wagering in the District of Columbia and designated OLG um, to basically be the regulator and operator for this um, new law. DSLBD also became, had a unique role in, in participating in this new industry of sports betting and sports wagering, offering that CBE plan compliance, um, as Bert mentioned previously. So, in collaboration with OLG, we require that all entities seeking to participate in sports wagering activities that they have the approved CBE plan and that DSLBD will work with you to um, ensure CBE participation and also enforce um, as we monitor the activities. And I just wanted to note that it's important to say that an approval of a CBE plan does not necessitate the approval of a sports wagering license, as that is a pretty extensive, extensive process. However, if we do deny a CBE plan, that will prohibit an applicant from obtaining a sports wagering license. So just wanted to make that distinction for all attendees here today. What I wanted to focus on, um, Bert mentioned the different types of licensing that OLG provides. Um, wanted to focus on the operator license or the Class A, um, Class B, or management server, service provider licensing. Those are the types of licensing that would come through DSLBD in terms of um, getting that approval of the CBE plan and um, certain documents as a part of this process. If if um, we also do the joint venture certification, so for the next slide, um, Bert mentioned that there's a reduced initial application fee. So there's 125,000 for class A's and 25,000 for class B's. Also, if anyone is interested in um, applying for more than two sports wagering licenses, the applicant has to subcontract with a certified joint venture. So or CBE, so that is that will afford you additional sports wagering license um, uh, over the two cap. And so, if you want to find out more information about um, DSLBD's sports betting process, I've listed the link here: dslbd.dc.gov. If you go to our website and click on sports wagering or sports betting, you'll have that information there as well. And for the businesses that are attending the session today, you may be familiar with our contracting joint venture process. I wanted to um, note some of the differences for between um, the contracting space and also for the licensing with sports betting. So the differences here with sports betting, um, we have to have a majority owner of that joint venture that's a certified business enterprise. So that, that is different than the contracting side. 
Also, that majority owner has to maintain one of the subcategories within the CBE program, which is a resident owned business. Disadvantaged business enterprise or small business enterprise. So not only does that CBE have to be the majority owner of that joint venture, you th that CBE has to maintain 1 of those categories and I'll talk about that shortly. Also, um, we do ask that that potential joint venture create a separate entity. So you will have to register with the Department of Consumer and Regulatory Affairs and obtain business licensing under the name of that new entity. So that's a little different than the normal joint venture process that we have um, from the contracting side. So although there are a number of documents that will be required as a part of um, DSLBD's um, review of CBE plans, I wanted to focus on the operational budget, capacity building plan, and CBE utilization plan, as those really speak to how we're utilizing CBEs as a part of the sports betting process. So that may be of interest to, to know how we are going to utilize and help grow CBEs in this in this industry. So once a, an applicant submits an operational budget to DSLBD. Some of the key areas that we will consider and that you should think of when you're um, sending, submitting that out to DSLBD, we look at the IT service areas, um, food and beverage areas, accounting, administrative costs such as legal, licensing, and insurance, and labor and payroll. So those are areas, um, it's not limited to those areas, but those are some of the key areas that we know that we have CBEs to participate in. So, um, you know, the normal construction, landscaping, things of that nature, those are okay. But what we're looking to see is growing um, CBEs in other areas, specifically as it pertains to sports betting. So, as you're submitting your operational budgets um, to DSLBD, these are areas to consider. When we talk about the capacity building plan, um, this slide talks about what we're looking for when you submit that plan to DSLBD. So it should be a detailed description of how the applicant would operate and manage sports wagering activities for each year of the licensing period. So we're looking to see that there's an increase of contracting opportunities with CBEs and both professional and non-professional -prof services during that licensing period. A detailed description of how the applicant would develop the capacity of small business enterprises and small business enterprise and eligible firms. And I'll talk about what that means shortly to become sports wagering operators, operators and management service providers. Also, we look for how you will develop and build the capacity of small business enterprises during that licensing period. And for management service providers, we would ask that your capacity building plan, um, you know, should reflect for a year and then operators, the capacity building plan should reflect within 5 years. So each of the, each of the types of licensing that you can receive, you know, have different timeframes associated with it. So we would look for your plan to mirror that time period for that licensing period. So the CBE utilization plan is your CBE subcontracting plan. So how would you meet that 35% subcontracting requirement? At that time, um, you know, the operating budget that I spoke about, there's key areas that you can um, subcontract with CBEs in. So between the compliance division, um, business opportunities division, and um, once you submit an application to the department, we'll all work together to help help you identify, um, you know, CBEs for that plan. So we'll review your plan and talk about ways that you can maybe increase um, CBEs, um, utilizing CBEs in certain areas. So that plan is, is also required as a part of the process. And when I talk about certified business enterprises, um, we're speaking about local businesses, local for-profit businesses that are headquartered here in the district. So the three categories that I mentioned for the joint venture process, the small business enterprise, disadvantaged business enterprise, and resident-owned business, those are highlighted in the chart here. Um, normally in the contracting space, you know, certified business enterprises receive preference when bidding on contracting opportunities. In this space, if you are a CBE um, that wants to joint venture, you have to maintain 
one of these three categories, as I mentioned, so the small business enterprise is specifically mirrors the S small business administration standards. So, independently owned, operated and controlled and your gross receipts for the 3 last 3 years do not exceed the threshold, um, the business size standard for your industry that you're in. And so that is something that we can work existing CBEs may be already small business enterprises, um, but we can also work with you um, to identify whether you're not or not you qualify. The disadvantaged business enterprise, that means that your business is majority owned by a, an individual who's socially and economically disadvantaged. We do have a process um, if you're an existing CBE to add that category to your profile. So um, you can reach out to my team or myself um, to find out how to do that. The resident owned business means that you're majority owned by a district resident. So more than 50% owned by a district resident. So if you are a CBE that maintains the local status um, and then one of these designations, you can joint venture with a non CBE um, to to receive the discounted initial application fee as I um, or reduced applic initial application fee that was mentioned previously. For those businesses that are on the call that may not know or not certified, I just wanted to touch a little bit on what it means to be a CBE. So to be a certified business enterprise, you have to meet this local business enterprise definition. So your principal office has to be in the District of Columbia and you have to meet one of these standards. So either you're independently owned, operated and controlled or owned, operated and controlled by a district based enterprise or owned by a non-district based enterprise that's majority owned by district residents. So you have to meet one of those standards to be considered local. In addition, those individuals, the CEO and highest level managers that manage the day-to-day -day operations of your business has to maintain their office and perform their functions in that principal office. So we confirm that um, by conducting site visits to the location. Currently, we're doing that virtually. Also, you have to meet one of four standards. So more than 50% of the owners or employees have to be district residents. More than 50% of your fixed assets have to be located in DC or more than 50% of your gross receipts have to be derived from transactions in the district. So it's a pretty extensive local definition. You have to meet that full definition in order to qualify for the CBE program. Once you meet that requirement, the subcategories that I mentioned on the previous slide, um, specifically for this process, the small resident owned and disadvantaged that can be added um, as a part of the application process if you're eligible after you meet that local test. For more information about sports betting um, and also the CBE program, I would encourage you to visit our website, the dslbd.dc.gov. Also, I've listed here our agency telephone number. Any questions related to this process, please send them to cbe.info at dc.gov. If you are interested in becoming certified and want to um, access our district enterprise system, that is where our application is housed. And you're having any technical issues ac accessing the system, you can send an email to des.support at dc.gov. Um, you know, our IT team will you know, help you with your credentials or any tr troubleshooting any issues that you may encounter. So at this time, I want to pass it over to Tina to talk a little bit about her experience with this process. Thank you, Thank you. Melissa. Mm -hmm. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Tina Harrison. I'm the Vice President of Business Development for Infinity Solutions, Inc. Also, Department of Criminal Justice Services Compliance Agent for Infinity Solutions, Inc. Certified and also a DC Security Certified Registrar for Infinity Solutions, Inc. Infinity Solutions, Inc. was established in December 2002. Our core capabilities are information technologies, electronic, electronic security systems, um, guard services, and the electronic security systems covers camera solutions, access control, 
as, long, as well as burglar alarm systems. We are a Small Business Administration, SBA, 8A graduate, graduated in 2013. A part of our business plan was to provide niche solutions and services to the federal government, state government, DOD, and local government services. So part of our business plan was to establish solutions that would give us a niche within the market where there are many. The best way for us to educate ourselves in the areas of our core capability was to establish relationship with some of the larger companies, such as Securitas, Stanley Security, where we became subcontractors. Once we became subcontractors, after a couple of years, we had the inroad to the manufacturers who provide security solution for your special niche markets, such as casinos, banking institution, financial institutions, museums, department, black box division of general services administration and the DOD. I'd like to start off my presentation with a epiphany that started back in 2005 with my son at the dinner table. I had done some work for Mr. Ken Rowland in Albuquerque, New Mexico, who flew me in to do a voice presentation for a proposal we were going after. Never met him before, he flew me in. And at that time I had to talk about securing military assets firearms, weaponry, and ammunition. In doing so, I had to come to the table with the expertise of knowing what I need to know about security and surveillance systems and solutions. And that brings me to the topic of my son. Mr. Rowland asked me to go with him safari hunting. And my I mentioned it at the dinner table and my son said to me, am I gonna take a machine gun? <clears throat> which was an epiphany. It let me know that when approaching any type of task, you need to have the skill, the consistent understanding of who and what it is you're hunting, or you need a machine gun to do fire rapid to be able to survive. To me, that was an epiphany on how I need to run, establish, and develop my business. So we had to fine tune some things to stay on point. Basically, that brings me to my interview with William Hill, December, 2019. William Hill reached out to the Office of Small Business and um, we were one of the candidates to do an oral presentation, an overview of what it is that we do and we provide as our core capabilities. And that came into play that after multiple years of defining our business plan, getting the proper compliance agent, security compliance agent, background checks, drug testing, screening that we need to play in this arena. So when we received the call from William Hill, it was the perfect time for us. William Hill asked us about our past performances we were able to demonstrate our past performance in secured environments, integrating secure technology, having a staff that also passed background check drug screening, also a requirement of the Office of Lottery and Gaming, OLG. So basically our concept started off with William Hill talking about their new business Inter entity they were going to establish in the District of Columbia. Very new to us. Although what we did was we talked to them about our past performance. We took the initiative. We started off with a trial basis saying, hey, we're a CBE, we're a small company, but we can do this. Let us start off with your security design. And they agreed upon that. So 
we looked at the blueprints, worked with the general contractors and architect, and came up with a security design that met OLG compliances. Then we started with our installation and integration. During that time, we looked at the main footprint of William Hill and decided to get back to the drawing board of our business plan, navigate solutions, find out what we needed to do to be in this league of services. We investigated, found that we need to make district compliances based on district professional security licenses, looked at OLG page, did our research and our homework, really looked at the nature of the beast that we were actually hunting. Once we did that, we were able to come back to William Hill and provide additional services and solutions that were from our past performance. We were able to demonstrate to OLG that we had the manufacturer solution for casino grade camera and security systems, we had the capability and we had the staff that could pass the past performance, drug testing, and DC required, DCGS required professional licenses and certifications. We didn't stop there. We went from the information technology, electronic security, structure wire and cable, continued our research, provide security monitoring solutions, security guard services, which falls under the auspice of our DCJS compliance licenses. <clears throat> Excuse me. During our time at William Hill, we've noticed there's a lot of opportunities for other small business who want to do business with sports betting activities. And by doing so, we talked to the Department of Small and Local Businesses and came up with some new ideas and concepts because there's plenty of opportunities, not just for us, Infinity Solutions, but for other CBEs who are trying to effectively work for sports book that impact their bottom line. And some of those opportunities I'd like to mention is possibly cleaning solutions. Cleaning solutions for a sports book and restaurant in the public area and spaces don't require any real special certification besides your CBE and district certifications. But let's look at the nature of the business, their financial services, secured operations. 25% of the facility cannot be cleaned by cleaning companies who don't have security background checks or professional security licenses within the district. So looking at the nature of the beast and who we're servicing as far as Sportsbook, William Hill, or any of the other businesses that are out there, it's relevant that CBEs prepare themselves so that they can obtain the day and opportunities and have the cadre of either set capabilities or rapid growth in gaining those core solutions and security requirements that you need to play and work and deliver in such an environment. There are other opportunities within the sportsbook betting area from the restaurant side, restaurant solutions, information technology solutions, printing, development of um, signage. So my recommendation to the CBEs that are participating in this video today is to take a good look, research, look at the company who you're trying to provide solutions to, do what you need to do to meet the compliances of the District of Columbia obtaining the security requirements you need for yourself and your staff so that you can better perform in this type of sports book environment. Thank you very much for allowing me to be here today. It was, I also like to thank William Hill 
who had the confidence to allow us to come in and demonstrate and open up the opportunities for us. And like I said, we started with one small opportunity out of the capacity plan and utilization plan of 35% of the construction. And today we are supporting more work than we imagined out of William Hill, just by doing our due diligence and following the guidelines, reading the laws and part participating in such video conferences as today. Gather your information, and I look forward to seeing many of you out on the site. Thank you very much for having me. Thanks, Tina. I got a couple of questions I'd like to run past you, and hopefully you'll be able to answer them. <clears throat> if not, direct us to the right party. But sure. um, how can you give us a clearer vision of whether the opportunities available for a business like yourselves or other CBEs? Well, actually, our small business and development um, from the District of Columbia group are very, very proactive. They're looking at CBEs. They're looking at us and seeing um, what we're doing out in the community. And they refer a lot of us. So first, I would say, Definitely, definitely, it's the advantage of a CBE to participate with the programs offered by the small um, and local business representatives that are presenting here today. And secondly, there's forecast, there's buzzwords. We live in this city, we need to go and knock on doors. Never after 19 years of being in business, we don't have a problem in knocking on doors. We know that new sports book opportunities are coming in the district. So we need to start there. We need to meet the representatives and, and the people that are opening the sports book, introduce ourselves and definitely build relationships. Thanks, Tina, that's a great answer. Melissa, do you have any questions for Tina? Not at this time. <laughs> All right. Um, so let me ask you another question, Tina. What are some of the items that a sports book might purchase, like the William Hills, the future one that'll be at Nats Park and eventually Audi Field? Wow, there's a vast amount. We can look at it in twofold. We can look at from the construction and then once the building is open to the public. From the construction aspect of it, Everything is there in the 35% to make up the 35% that a sportsbook operator must obtain. You've got your structure wire and cable. You've got your drywall. You've got your painting. You've got um, construction. You've got surveys. Many different things on the construction side are open to CBEs. Now, once the business is open, or prior to the business opening on the restaurant side, you've got goods, you've got plates, table, furnishing, um, posters, uh, signage, you've got um, toilet paper, you've got copy paper. There are many different opportunities for CBEs from many different aspects. And if you wanna deal and, and go deeper into it. Also, don't forget the nature of who you're doing business with. Do your background checks, get your professional license, get your security, make sure you can get through the OLG department with the squeaky clean reputation that allow you to have longevity. Thanks, Tina, that's another great question. Uh, so one from the chat talks about, would you recommend a CBE cold calling just walking up to a potential uh, sports book like William Hill and pitching their services. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, 19 years, I'm still doing that. I'm still knocking on doors. I'm still doing cold calls. My grandfather had a saying, you got a 50-50 chance. If you do nothing, you have zero chances. Yes, I would definitely suggest doing that. Great. 
Look like Melissa popped in. I guess there's another question. I this might be for lottery though, but would I need a CBE to start a business with lottery with the lottery? It's another question. That question we're probably going to have to refer to someone else in lottery that can answer that. So I'll have to get that inf information and respond back in the chat to that person. Okay. I, I can try to answer that. Sure. Go ahead, right. Ridgely. <laughs> so, you know, of course, the lottery is a district government agency. It's the Office of Lottery and Gaming. We are subject to the same uh, rules as all district government agencies relating to uh, the small businesses and having those included as parts of contracts. So any contract that we enter into that's $250,000 or more must include a CBE plan. And I think Melissa can tell you more about how those CBE plans and what's required of those. Right, so that's absolutely correct. So the, I have to move from contracting to from sports betting to contracting. So, so the normal, the CBE law in itself, um, you know, 50% of the expendable budget of the agencies that we monitor have to be spent with local CBEs that are small. Um, in addition, as originally mentioned, um, any contract of over 250,000, there's that 35%. Currently during um, the public health emergency, it was 50% subcontracting requirement with certified business enterprises. So I would say to answer that question as well, um, I think you would reach out to, um, to lottery about kind of contracting opportunities. I believe, do you guys have that on your website? Um, we probably um, any opportunities, contracting opportunities, I would reach out to because they have to spend money with CVEs as well. <laughs> oh, it's, and, and to clarify, because the, the Office of Lottery and Gaming is a subordinate office within the office of the Chief Financial Officer. Mm -hmm. All of our contracting is done through the OCFO, the office of the chief of the chief financial officer. Right. They have an office of contracts. That office of contracts has a website. You can go to cfo.dc.gov and look for the office of contracts. And then um, the contracting opportunities are posted on the OCFO's website. And it's actually a good place to look because you see all of OCFO's uh, contracting opportunities, not just lottery. Right. Thanks, Ridgely. Yes, are there any other questions in the chat? And so yeah, if there's a question here. This asks, uh, can a CBE be an operator? Um, the best way to answer that question would be, uh, it probably would have to be a joint venture, don't you uh, suppose on that, Melissa? Right, to operate a sports book, um, I would say, yeah, because and I wouldn't say every situation is unique as we, we were going through this process, but I would say you wouldn't normally have to joint venture with a management service provider. So it's usually, um, as we mentioned, the class A or class B's um, joint venturing with a management service provider to operate a sports book. But we can um, also, you can reach out to us and we can see like what you're trying to do and, and kind of direct you in the right way. Thanks, Melissa. I appreciate that. The, the 1 thing that I, I think should be noted is that a, a class B operator. Um, per, per the regulations has to have a primary business other than the sports book. So it has to be either a restaurant, a tavern, it could be a gas station. It could be a smoothie place. It, it has to have another business model and, and operating. Uh, it can't not, it cannot only operate as a sports book. So I think that's important for our attendees. To know. Hey, Tina, do you have any other information that you could like to share with our attendees related to uh, possibly venturing into this world of sports books and, and working with them? It's a lot to learn. Um, even we've been providing guard services for about 15 years. But when we stepped into the sports book and the amount of guard services and the requirement of the OLG, we had to rush to the races and collaborate with William Hill and how they operate as a sports book. <clears throat> had to make some changes, had to learn the language, assets, not money. 
follow assets and what that means. So yes, again, I've got to go back to the point of doing your homework, doing your research, collaborating with the sports book representative, and they were very helpful with us. Um, when I had to do my standard operation procedure, I had done it for the federal government, had done it for the DOD. But when it came down to the sports book, there are certain guidelines and languages. So building that relationship with the sports book owner and being open to learn will help you go a very long way. Tina, I'd love to follow up on that question if I could. I, I'm, I'm jumping out of lurking mode here because you and I had a really interesting conversation last week where we ran through types of businesses that you thought could make a decent pitch to a sports book. And some of them were really surprising to me. One of the ones that came up and we actually heard that William Hill was looking for an event producer to help them with decorations for their grand opening and did not think to look to the CBE list. So event planners, florists, horticultural companies, uh, anybody who does plant installations, uh, interior design would be a good pitch, right? Absolutely. Even to floor mat, to cleaning of uniforms, to lighting solutions, LED lighting replacement, coming in at a certain time. If you're secured, you can get in after hours and put in lighting systems or unsecured during regular normal business hours. There's a lot to deliver and a lot of services, a lot of opportunities for CBEs. And I would tell them to go and knock on the doors as soon as possible. You know, um, William Hill has to participate in the 35% spin. And it's not just today, it's the whole time the business is running. And you oh, can I just oh, oh, go ahead. Go I was just gonna add really quickly um to the point of like the areas that CBEs can participate in. And I think part of the requirement to submit that CBE plan to DSLBD to review, and we talked about the capacity building plans. I know once the once the plans are submitted to DSLBD, I know um Lauren's division as well as the compliance division, we all work together to ensure that a lot of these areas that you guys are talking about, like if, if we see that there are potential new areas that we didn't think of for CBEs to participate in, um, th that's part of the conversation. Because um, the goal really is this is a new, this is an industry that we weren't normally in, right? And so we're trying to figure out how do we grow um, our CBE pool, like a little over 1900, how do we grow those CBEs in this industry and, and have new ones, right? So grow the CBE pool so we have um, more, more businesses in this area. So I think that that's part of the conversation that you had, Lauren, with Tina is like, the conversations that we will have continuously about um, ways to include CBEs in this. So that's great. Yes, definitely. After after learning that the uh, sports books, sports sports books, we're not sure who to ask for. We put together a list of every single NIGP code that a CBE can per currently provide. And so we will make that available to anybody going through the application process so that they they have this incredible reference. And, and I wanted to ask Tina, um, you've mentioned uh, uh, secure firms a couple of times. Do you know, do you have any advice about what kind of security clearances, what kind of security certifications a company would need to get to pivot their services to a sports book? Yes, it took a little bit to discover this, but the Office of Regulatory Affairs have a professional licenses um, certification and services. So if you go to the Department of Regulatory Affairs, professional licenses, that professional licenses have a security type solutions. So whatever it is that I'm selling, if I want to do secure solution, I can obtain a license from there, take my fingerprints down at the MPD and do background check and drug testing. So um, the drug testing and background check, the background check is done by MPD, but the drug testing, they have some referrals, some places that you and your staff can possibly go and take those. We've had some questions coming in from the chat. 
Okay. Um, uh, so one of them is, do we know uh, what percentage William Hill is at so far for the year? And is Ms. Tina the only CBE they're working with currently? I, I'd love to take the second half of that question, which is to say, absolutely not. Um, Infinity <laughs> Solutions is not the only CBE. And William Hill has a, uh, in addition to a great success story with Infinity Solutions, there's another CBE that they've worked with. They like their work so much that they are now using them in facilities outside of the district. So thanks to the sports wagering law, we are now helping DC small businesses export their services to other states, which is just really quite a lovely accomplishment. Yes, yes. Uh, the see, first... I've got, got a quick question. I'm sorry to cut you off. Um, so how long have you been working with William Hill and how have you found it so far? December 2000, December uh, 2019 is when we started our first interview with William Hill. And it's been wonderful. It's been wonderful. And they're, they're open to learning as well. This whole CBE process is a little new to them. So it's very important for CBEs when they walk through the door to identify, I'm a CBE. I can support you with your 35% plan. I want to be your um, LED light vendor. You have a light bulb out, you need supplies. I'd like to provide you with that. I think we need to state those things up front. They know about the CBE, they know about the 35%, but they don't know the path in getting there. So it's up to us, the CBE, to let them know who we are and how we can help them. And also reporting, <clears throat> CBE know how to do the CBE reporting. We can help William Hill do that. So anytime we can give them something and, and put some skin in the game and invest as well, it helps them a lot. That's great, Tina. Um, I'm just kind of curious, how did you guys come together again? I don't know if you shared that, that history. Well, in actuality, we have done, we do a lot of niche market work. We did our first, art, the district's first artificial intelligent camera solution at the Mystic Stadium in Southeast. And by doing that, we worked along with the um, actual Mystic's owner to do additional work at their uh, physical therapy location out in Southeast. So we basically came through, vetted through the small business office and also through DC events. So we came as a referral over to William Hill. Um, that's what they said when they called us, that we were referred to them. And it's basically based on the other work that we've provided for the district over the last 18 years. Great information, Tina, thank you. Lauren, do you have any other additional questions? I do a couple of other business ideas that came through the one that was not a surprise, but we certainly want to be sure and mention it. And if um, anybody, Tina, Bert, or um, uh, Melissa have any, any stories to share, uh, marketing firms, advertising firms, that seems to be uh, after IT services and security services, one of the biggest purchases by Sportsbook of local businesses. Tina, have you run into any any local uh, marketing businesses in your work with William Howe? Yes, actually, um, there there there's an opportunity. Again, I'm I'm there, but I won't be there always, right? They're they're open up for new business. They want to do rotations. If you're a marketing firm and you're concentrating on even street teams to do promotions out in the district for William Hill. Competition's gonna get heavy. Other sports book are coming in. If you're a marketing company, I would approach William Hill to do that. Um, I do see that someone asked for our business contact and I'm pretty sure Lauren, you will provide Infinity Solutions contact information as well. I see that in one of the questions. So yes, I. I would, as a matter of fact, on this project, I also had small businesses working with me on the construction side, which is a normal practice of our company. Um, we know what it was like 19 years ago when we first started, and we had people that allowed us to come in and subcontract. 
So we subcontract opportunities also uh, during the construction phase to other small uh, business enterprises throughout the district. And you mentioned um, construction firms. That is definitely a strength of the CBE list. We have uh, a large number of uh, large general contractors, specialty contractors, interior construction companies. Those are uh, always firms that uh, as these <coughs> new new businesses in the district start building out their facilities, that seems to be a, a really obvious connection right there. Um, the other one that I wanted to talk about, um, which of course is, is a district specialty would be legal services. Uh, we are known for our high caliber of law firms in the district, and that is absolutely something that sports books are looking for. 